Good evening. Uh, welcome, councillors, to the meeting of the Planning and Licensing Committee of the 19th of November 2024. Uh, welcome to members of the public who have joined us in person and welcome to any of those listening on Zoom. As always, please can those speaking ensure the microphones are switched on for the benefit of those listening online. And to members of the public, if you're only here to observe or speak to a particular agenda item, please feel free to leave the meeting once that has concluded. Um, on to the agenda proper. Um, apologies, David. Uh, apologies from Councillor Smith and Councillor uh, McRobb. McRobb, sorry. So we're voting to 10 this evening. Thank you. Um, the agenda item two is to approve the minutes of the meeting of the 17th of September 2024. Um, has anybody got any comments that have not been, we've not been made aware of in the past? If that's the case, please have a proposer. Councillor Payne and a seconder. Councillor Wilby. All those in favour who are here. That's carried, Chair. Um, Councillor Brown and Councillor Ellison were absent. So. Thank you. Thank you. You were here, yeah. Um, ag agenda item three. Um, do we have any declarations of interest? I believe we have a few. We'll go from left to right. Um, Councillor Wise. I think I've nearly got the full house. Uh, 2024 strokes 0636. Um, I've got a non registrable interest with no grounds for dispensation and will withdraw from the meeting for that Thank you. item. 2024-1139 RG3 and 2024-1206 RG3. I'm the portfolio holder for that area within the council and I will, will withdraw for both those items. Thank you. Um, please keep your hands up if you have interest so I can go run a time. Councillor West. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ray Payne. Uh, basically, what Councillor Wise says, Chair, I'm in the same situation. Um, so that I've got to sit out. For, for which application, 20, please? 20240636. Thank you. Um, Councillor Karen Payne. OK, thank you. Are there any more declarations of interest? Um, Councillor Ellison. Microphones, please. Yeah, um, it, there's a conflict with my um, portfolio. Uh, thank you. Um, any other declarations of interest? Thank you. Um, moving on to items four. Um, we have had requests to speak this evening. These will be heard under the relevant planning applications. An officer will introduce each application and give the recommendation. We will then hear from any members of the public, any parish, parish council representative or ward members, if they're not on the committee, and then from the applicant or the representative before moving to debate. We now move on to the um, agenda items as referring to planning applications. Item five is report number 126204. Oh, sorry, apologies, I've missed a bit. I've agreed to vary the order of business to hear application 5B20240941 FUL first. And after that application, we will proceed with the rest of the application as listed. So just wait two seconds while those with um, interests um, shuffle out. Thank you. We'll come and get you once we're finished with Lister staying in. Okay. So we go on to 2024-0941 FUL, change of use of part of the ground floor of the existing unit from offices, storage, industrial, to use as a day centre for disabled adults, providing a workshop and storage as part of the care use. Insertion of new windows to ground floor and first floor. The recommendation is refusal subject to conditions. Um, Paul Milne, please give you present the report. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, here we have a site plan. Just see it. There's a hatched area here. Um, the actual unit is just below that hatched area on Pannier's Way. Obviously, obviously access off the A606. <clears throat> now, this is a uh, employment site. Relatively new units. Um, the unit in question is the is the unit outlined in red. Um, 
on this plan. You can see how the other units are spread around the general rectangular site. Um, this is the existing external um, plans showing that it's a, it's a row of units. This is the, obviously the units that's boxed off within the red boxes. It's just a, a glazed entrance and a, and a metal shutter door. And again, this is the end unit, unit 3D on that layout plan. They are uh, other neighbouring units going across in a terrace formation. This is the existing floor plans showing the obviously it's the ground floor and there is a mezzanine level above. Uh, this is the proposed elevations. You can see within um, the boxes down here to the left, there's insertion of two ground floor windows. Uh, and in the box to the top right, there's insertion of a upper floor window. Uh, the upper floor window will serve the existing business with the ground floor windows serving the proposed use. Again, and this just shows you the locations of the two windows to the rear, as you can see there to the right hand side. And this is the proposed floor plan. Uh, the blue hatched area is the proposed care use with the red hatched area being retained for the existing uh, employment usage. The, the entrance to the care use will be down through the shutter door. You know, I'll show you this in greater detail in the external photographs, but when, once the shutter door is raised, there's a glazed frontage with a, with a door that opens up into the, the area of the proposed care use. Again, the, this red line indicates how, how tightly the, the, the red line goes around the building and the proposed car parking spaces. There are six car parking spaces that would be able to be used uh, between the two uses. As we go through some external photographs, we're just entering into Tungsten Park here with the unit in question directly in front of us here. This is the closer up, <coughs> showing the existing glazed entrance to Mowbray interiors. You can just see there the roller shutter door that will raise up to allow access, and it's directly adjacent to a, a neighbouring use. Um, you can see, just see the back of a van backing into that uh, roller shutter there. This is just the side of the unit and the rear. And this gives you an indication of the general frontage showing the three parking spaces and, and gives you an idea also of the general car parking area around there and the existing units. And again, this is the neighbouring unit that just shows you how what the existing use is. This is a, a removals van backing into the uh, roller shutter adjacent. And these are, these are units and uses that are around the site to give you an idea. Now we are, now I've entered into the roller shutter door here. Now this is the glazed entrance to the ground floor into the proposed uh, care use. Now members will note that above is the mezzanine level, which is in, in use by the existing business. Currently the existing business um, to, because it's a storage area, forklifts come into that area to lift products up into that location to store above into the um, mezzanine level. And here it gives you an indication of the inside areas that will be used for the care usage. There's a kitchen there and a, and a toilet. And the, here is where the ground floor windows will be inserted along the left hand wall there. And this just gives you an indication of the existing mezzanine level above showing the storage that exists within that mezzanine level. So these are the policies under consideration. Um, of particular note is policy CS13 of the Rutland Core strategy. I, I've, I've put it all in full in, in there, but it, the really key part of it is part C, which is, the, is to safeguard industrial employment uses, um, which are B1, B2, B8. Uh, unless it can be demonstrated there's an economic benefit and not detrimental to the supply of employment land within the county. This is just showing you that the, the original approval was for the unit for B1, B2, B8 employment uses. As part of that um, approval, there was a condition saying that, that the unit shall be used within those use classes and for no other purpose. Uh, while the, whilst the uh, description includes the use of a workshop, this is primar primarily a care use. 
um, and uh, it is not an employment use. Um, if, it, if, it, if it was uh, a workshop use, it wouldn't require planning permission. It, it doesn't f fall within that use class. And the proposed care use will see a loss of that employment use. Um, the, the users of the, the ground floor will not be employed uh, by the company running it, and they are, they are a care providing company. Uh, there were a number of concerns in a previously refused application, and, and one of those was lack of natural light. And of course, as part of this application, ground floor windows ha have been uh, in inserted. But we still have concerns regarding the safe uh, dropping off and collecting of um, adults with disabilities in this industrial area. We, we consider it inappropriate and detrimental to the safety of the use of that building. And we also consider, as you can see by the tight red line around the building, there was no safe outdoor space. Uh, it's only really parking areas and small paths in this location. Um, we have been in contact uh, with our own Rutland County Council Community Care Services, and they have made the following points to us. These points are included within the addendum that's been passed to members. Uh, they have indicated that its best practice is to support and integrate people with disabilities into the community and existing businesses. And with regards to light provision of safe open space, Without this, it limits what reasonable adjustments can be made for people using the facilities. And they believe there is a clear and potential conflict between the proposed care use workshop and the remaining industrial land uses. Um, we have no objection in relation to the design in the, in the insertion of windows. And obviously it's not located in close proximity to uh, residential properties. And uh, obviously there's no uh, objection from the highway authority that they are providing suitable parking spaces and it's off the main highway. Um, now, again, refer members to the addendum. Um, within the addendum, we've slightly changed the result of the consultation with our own community services. We have slightly changed the wording within um, the second reason for refusal. And also within the addendum, it includes the assessment we've made in accordance with our own, uh, with the equality uh, matters. Um, so uh, our reasons for a refusal are contained within the addendum and reason number one within the main agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Milne. Um, we have one one speaker this afternoon. Could I um, invite Deborah Crate, the applicant, to come and speak? Um, you will have three minutes from um, when you start. If you could turn your speaker on, there's a red light on the front um brilliant fantastic your three minutes start now thank you <clears throat> i'm hoping the members of the committee managed to read my letter that was emailed over the weekend i will be pleased to answer any questions you may have about our proposal from your visit to your the site you will have seen that this is a business part that this business part is not one of substantial industrial workings. It's mainly trade counters and storage facilities, which are open to members of the public. It's a clean and well-managed business park. It isn't an oppressive environment. It is deemed safe for the visiting public and would be no more dangerous for our service users who will be dropped off at the front door and taken into the building. There will be no loss of employment use. There will be a gain. Staff are employed by supporting connections and this will be their place of work alongside Mowbray Workplace Solutions, it will continue to operate from the building. Furthermore, to our service users, it is their place of work. It isn't all about care, it's about supporting people. It may be deemed to be of limited contribution to the, econ the economy and thereby failing planning policy, but it is a huge deal to our service users who take great pride in what they produce and sell, and the benefit of this should not be underestimated. On behalf of all our staff, and more importantly, the people we support, we hope that you too can see the benefits of our proposal and grant us the planning permission. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Deborah. Um, members of the committee, do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, Councillor Corby. Yeah, um, Councillor Corby. Apologies. Apologies. Um, yes, I wonder if you could please, the officers there have, uh, have, have talked about our policy CS13 and um, in that it talks about the officer mentioned the economical benefits not being detrimental to the overall supply and quality of employment land 
That is where the officers are coming from with regards to their objection to this application. What would you say to that in terms of, um, you know, the economical benefits that, um, you know, your, your application would bring to the county? Well, there was something recently published that through the care sector and support actually contributes £60 billion pounds to the economy. <coughs> so for people to... Uh, we, are, we are trying to enable people we're trying to so they can learn skills and they can contribute to the economy they do contribute to the economy and why do people assume that they don't so anything we can do to support people to do this that's just all that we want to do it's so people can reach their full potential thank you thank you um councillor Wilby. thank you chair <clears throat> i think i'm more concerned about uh, not the economic uh, side, although I know it is a difficult time for us all, e economy-wise. A lot of the um, problems for uh, the recommendation seem to be around the people who are going to be using it and how detrimental it might be to them not to uh, have open spaces and things like that. Now, you're the expert in this field. Would you tell me a little bit about that, please? I'm sorry, but I don't understand why it would be any more detrimental to any of the individuals I support than anybody else without any needs. So I, I'm sorry, I can't answer that because I just find it an unrealistic question. I have no, why should it be any more, why should it be detrimental to anybody regardless of the needs or abilities? I, no, I think, I think the way I read the, the wording was that uh, the officers were concerned that um, some of the users might not have enough uh, areas where they could relax, easy access, um, whether they would be distracted by some of the comings and goings around them. Um, that's the way I read um, the thing. And uh, I was looking to you really just to uh, to, to tell me what you really thought, because you obviously are very keen to get this project going. We um, thought we, sorry, we really look forward to coming into Oakham. I was approached last December by three parents in one month from this area, and I had to turn them down at Melton. I didn't have space for them, and that's why we initially thought about moving into Oakham. <coughs> thought fantastic opportunity. The needs, obviously, in answer to your question, if people thought it, if there wasn't enough space or something, they would tell us. They would say, we, we don't want to do this. People have choice, people have options. And then we would make different arrangements. <clears throat> we would take them out, we would do whatever. There are great parks and areas around the area. It's, there, is a lot, there is a lot on offer in Oakham. That's why we chose this area. <clears throat> but people, if people think there isn't enough space or they want somewhere to relax, then they would tell us, and then we, we would address those <clears throat> issues. Uh, Sorry, Councillor, uh, sorry, uh, Councillor um, Mr. Johnson would like just to clarify a couple of points. Sorry, Chairman. I, I just wanted to make it clear that uh, uh, the, the, the reason that, that we'd raised it is obviously after um, consulting with other departments within the Council, I think that the concern that was raised was about the ability of the building to give flexibility to enable um, uh, options for reasonable adjustments for, for, for individuals. If that was necessary, it would be limited. Um, so that was the... the the point that we were just raising there. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the um, committee? Councillor Andrew Brown. Um, Mr. Crate, um, how many um, full-time equivalent jobs will will be um, utilised in this um, in this building? And um, Mr. Milne mentioned about the um, forklifts lifting up to stack things on the mezzanine level is that is that going to continue while you're using it no that wouldn't be in operation while we were in operation that that would be out of the hours of our operation that wouldn't be happening in the building at all that wouldn't be an operation then and uh, initially i've got four, four i've got four members of staff that would come into oakham so that would be on opening well and where we are in melton at the moment i've got 12 members of staff 30 service users but that's 10 years that business has taken to build up, but initially there would be four members of staff in it. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Any other members? Um, Councillor Ray Payne. Um, I'm concerned about this, this having your unit in the middle of a, a light industrial estate. I know it's not heavy industrial, but it's a light industrial estate. And uh, one of the rejections is the problems of dropping off and collecting the young people. I assume they'd be younger people. Uh, I've got somebody that's 67. So. Right, so in your clients then. Yep. Collecting and dropping off your clients uh, in an area where there's going to be a lot of vehicles, vans, lorries and that running through. It doesn't feel to me like an ideal situation. What have you got to say about that? Um, if I can just explain, if I can just refer to our set up at Melton at the moment. Um, we're next door to an MOT garage and people are come probably, I think there's a maximum of four, three taxis and one minibus. They all arrive around nine o'clock. They're gone, but the transport's gone by five past nine. We ask, everybody is assisted into the building and then they're in. Three o'clock, the transport comes again. One minibus, probably three taxis. Five past three, everybody's gone. There is no, there's nobody wandering around on their own. Everybody is supported, everybody is escorted on and off a transport. We have absolutely, you know, where we are, we have no, we have no parking. We are on a main road in Melton. Uh, we have parking around the back, that's where we pick up and drop. As I say, we are next door to an M MOT garage and we have had no, absolutely no concerns, no issues. And my staff are very highly trained. No, nobody's left unassisted getting in and out of transport. <coughs> Thank you. Any other further questions? Um, Councillor Wise and Councillor West. Thank you. Um, I'm interested in the, I can't remember if it was the application or your, or your letter or somewhere I've read that you allow some of your clients have individual one-to-one uh, -one care because of their particular needs. Yeah. Are those carers your employees or are they provided by a care agency? No, they're, they're my employees. So you would have fluctuation in the number of employees depending on no. which clients you had? No, I have 12 employees and uh, some, most days there are 10 employees in the building and to cater for the service users. Is that in Melton? You said yeah. you were having yeah, four in, in Melton. Oakham. Yeah, in Melton. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor West. Thanks, Chairman. Um, how, so th this is about use of the building. <clears throat> um, it's light and just at the moment, but how would it affect your service users if next door um, the existing tenant or owner departed and a much, much noisier engineering workshop or something moved in next door and, and there was a lot of mm. noise coming through from the adjacent premises? Um, how would that affect your service users, do you think? My service users made, made rather a lot of noise doing their own woodwork tasks and that, so I don't think that would have any effect. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just, just one sort of final question for me, if that's okay. Um, why this particular site? I'm just interested why, why here? Because um, I've worked in this for a long time. Some of the, some of the we've worked out of farms workshops and sure if you look around the county if you look around the country there are a lot of places that are work this is a, a brand new fantastic building it's a brilliant environment for the service users why should they always have to be shoved away in old run-down buildings that have nothing to have a brand new it's a fantastic opportunity thank you um if there's any no further questions um thank you very thank much you. i've just turned your microphone off and um you can go back to go back to your seat. Um, <clears throat> committee, over to you. Can I just remind you, this is, this is a relatively emotive application, um, but we do have to consider this on material planning grounds. So if we could just bear that in mind during our um, debate, thank you. Um, I did ask Charlotte as well that if we did stray into the non-material to, um, to please jump in and pull us up on it. Thank you. Over to you, committee. Questions? Um, Councillor Corby. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, this is a motive, and as far as I see here, we've got a B8 employment area, warehousing distribution. I understand the te from a technical aspect there where the offices are coming from, um, but then we look at the other areas of, of business there as well. And 
I've been looking at uh, the, the the planning um, documents sent in through the through, through the applicants, and I put this really in terms of our own policy CS7 on delivering socially inclusive communities that was quoted within that planning document, um, where development should take account of the needs and requirements of all people in the community, including people with disabilities and special needs, elderly people, etc., etc. Um, I wonder what the officer's response to that would be in respect of, of CS7 and in our deliberation of this. Chairman, I, I think it's um, it, it's one that members will need to, to weigh in the planning balance. Um, I think the issue that, that we have as officers is that this is one of the few remaining employment sites that we have at, at the moment uh, in, in terms of allocations um, where units um, are available. Uh, it was granted as um, uh, a, a use class um, B1, E brackets G, and then uh, B2 and B8. So it, it is a mix of light, um, could be more heavy industry or, or storage. Um, and it is really the, the loss of that, that employment land. Um, clearly, um, the, the facility is something, uh, the proposed facility is something that uh, as a council we'd actively support um, our concern is that the location in this particular case are on an allocated employment site and the loss of land. It, it, it's that the that is the issue that members will have to grapple with uh, and, and weigh in, in their own minds. Um, the the loss of the employment land um, to the benefits of providing what I'm sure would be a, a very good community facility. As officers, we believe that. Um, this isn't the right site for that, um, but that is one that members will have to, to make a decision on tonight. Um, Justin, could I just ask a, a supplementary on the back of that? Um, you mentioned about losing um, employment land, but from my understanding, unless I've got this completely wrong, that unit is taken up by Melton Interiors, and they are giving part of that existing unit to um, this care facility. So, in theory, is it? Why, how come it is losing it when it's already being used? The the ar argument would be that it, uh, when when we're looking at employment land, it's based on the floor space that, that's available, that's given over over to that. They're clear. They're they're clearly um, of the opinion that they can operate with a smaller smaller unit with less floor space, but that's still taking an element of floor space out of employment land and giving it over to something else whereas it could potentially still be used for another employment a greater employment generating use i suppose therefore i think my question is what is the ownership of that unit is that unit owned by melton interiors so therefore it would be their decision if they sublet the rest of that to another business i, I believe that's the case yeah uh, cl clearly um, there, there's elements again. If they were to, to sublet it for for something, it might not require planning permission. So there, there's different uses depending on what they wanted to use it for. It may or may not re require planning permission. If it's just been um, used uh, for workshop that sort of thing, then um, may not require a change of use at all. Okay, just to be clear, that it is not it's not in our in our will to be able to use that space it would have to be melton interiors as the owner who would sub that out for another employment use yes they whoever owns that building would have the, yeah. the ability either to, to to make use of all of the floor space for their own business yeah. or 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 it, it, if 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 they wanted to to let it out part let it out for something else then provided it fell within the existing planning permission they'd be able to do so thank you jumping in Councillor West, did I see your arm raised? <clears throat> Thanks, Chairman. I get the <clears throat> I get the appropriate use class bit, Justin, but we're losing employment land, but we are getting four jobs. Where does that where does that stand on on our decision making? Uh, I, again, it, that that is one that the um, me members will have to. To, to weigh in the balance, uh, you know, there, there is clearly an element of employment with arguably any any 
care facility, nursery, what well, you know, whatever the, the staff are employed, that there, there's an employment use there. I think um, what what we have officers have done is look back at when that planning permission was granted, what was envisaged going into that that site, and um, when planning permission was granted and the land was allocated for employment land, it was considered that we were looking at predominantly light industrial and, and storage uses. There, there was a general industrial permission there as well. Now, at the time that we granted all of the units on there, um, an assessment was made and we did allow a number of units that weren't wholly within the B1, B2 and B8 categories. There were a number that were approved um, outside of that. Um, our concern is that a further loss to outside of those uses is further re reducing the, the general industrial and employment land that, that we, we've got available. But, um, you know, I, it's fair to say there, there will be inevitably with any business an element of, of employment. I think that what members need to decide is, is this an appropriate location for, for that use? Uh, and and are, are you satisfied that, that it, it is um, not going to have a detrimental impact on the employment land provision that we've got. Uh, as officers, our concern is that it, it was envisaged that it would be predominantly a, a, a light industrial area or a general industrial area with some storage. Um, at the time we granted it, a number of units were negotiated to be used for other things. Um, so that's why you've got some of the, you know, the trade counter things in there. Um, so a further reduction is going to impact on that. That, that, that's something that you need to, to, to consider. Um, obviously, the officer report clearly states our, our, our position on that. You know, um, yeah, sorry. Paul. I'm up. So, so I, yeah, I just like to also point, point out that this, whilst the workshop element is included within the description here, we're not actually approving, that's not under consideration for the, for the requirement for needing planning commission. Because if it was just to be a workshop, it wouldn't need planning permission. What we're actually debating here is whether we should allow a care use within this facility. Now, this this care uh, provider happens to be wanting to uh, run a workshop from it, from it as part of this. But we should bear in mind that once approved, we are approving a care use within that building. So they could cease the workshop use at any point and a care use could take place within that unit that doesn't might not necessarily be a workshop. Uh, and, and you were right to pick up about the conflict with the uh, the forklifts because um, I don't know how we would uh, ensure that the forklifts didn't come in and out of that location mm -hmm. during the operation of the two uses. And it also, the viability of that unit going forward, how would it affect the viability of the remaining employment side of it? if we were stopping forklifts going in and out to service the uh, mezzanine level. Yeah, I, I agree. So just for clarity there, that if Mowbray Interiors sold the building and moved out to somewhere else and another owner came in or tenant came in to their part of that, uh, of that building, which is under industrial use, that would be they would be diminished in trying to find a tenant because of the restrictions placed upon them in terms of the hours within which they can use a forklift in that building because of the care use adjacent, which is, which is in the officer's opinion, in an inappropriate location. So we are, you know, we're not just potentially diminishing the floor space in use for care in this application. We're, we're weakening the attractiveness and the, vi the viability of that of that unit as a whole if if it goes into different ownership in future that, that's right is it if it will affect the viability of the employment side of the unit that's left that's great um councillor andrew brown um thank you chair um you mentioned mr milne about the the, the condition that, that said it's not to be used for any other purpose if we were to grant this, that that presumably negates that, does it? Or is that why we have to have this application because it's got that condition on it, and it's to try and yeah. remove that? that? That that is correct. It was granted permission for those uses. There was a condition put on to ensure that those uses were carried out within those units. Hence, why 
planning permission is required for the care use within it. Should, should permission be approved, it, it negate for that, for that part of the floor, ground floor space only, it negates those, it, it removes that yeah. obligation and that becomes a care use to the ground floor in the hatched area that was shown. Yeah. Well, my, my question was actually about precedent, but I think to a large extent you've answered it in the answers you've given to my colleagues, Councillor West and Councillor Brown, but I hear from you that there are concerns about precedent. Certainly, yeah. If, if this is granted, it, would be, it wouldn't be unreasonable to suggest that we could face further applications in the future within these units that would further water down and reduce the amount of employment floor space that we've got within the district that we're, that's already limited as we stand. Uh, Councillor Wilby. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I understand all the economics, but I also um, know what help is needed to the care sector and particularly in this um, sort of area. We've had an expert who's come on and um, indicated that this is a really good facility. She has uh, um, people who are well trained at looking after those people and it would give a, um, a great opportunity for people to develop some skills and you never know, perhaps because it is sitting in a, an area where there are lots of um, other folk uh, coming through, tradesmen, worksmen, artisans, it might even lead to a channel of work going forward, which uh, an employment. I, um, I can't help thinking that in this day and age, we need to be increasing our help to the care sector. And this seems to me to be um, a project which uh, we should support. Uh, Mr. Mill. Thank you, uh, Councillor. And um, whilst I hear what you're saying, uh, um, I totally respect the, the lady that spoke, um, and m members must give weight to what the lady said. I also must point to the comments we received from our own um, adult care section, who also do not believe that this is the correct location for such a facility. So members have to balance that out with the, the expertise of the lady that spoke against the expertise of our own officers. In the same fit within the same field. Thank you. Committee, any further questions? If there's no further questions, we now move to the recommendation to refuse. Please can you ask for a proposer. Uh, Councillor Payne. Yes, I, I must go along with what the officers have said. I think that this is uh I think the site's unsuitable for this development. So Thank I propose you. that we follow what the officers suggest. Thank you. In that case, do we have a seconder? Um, Councillor Andrew Brown. Um, therefore, the motion in front of you is for refusal. All those in favour of refusal? Three. Chair. And all those against? Four, Chair. <clears throat> And any abstentions? Councillor abstention. Wise. Therefore, that motion is um, is not carried. Um, would somebody like to put forward a um, alternative motion for a? Nobody would like to put one forward. Councillor Corby. We will have a go, Chair. Um, I was taken on the basis, I, I understand the care argument, I understand that, but the applicant is looking there and, and I'm persuaded that there's an economical benefit within that, in, within that application. I think as, as much as we have to look at policy, um, I'm sitting here looking at the MPPF and I think as, it, it, you know, if I'm looking at paragraph 38, I dug it out earlier on, which says local planning authorities should approach decisions on proposed development in a positive and creative way. The applicant in this case, just like in any other business, is responsible for the health and safety 
of everybody that's working within that environment. That is my view. Um, just in the same way as their neighbouring properties, uh, Howden's, screw fix or whatever, have customers coming in to, to look after it. They also have to operate forklifts in that environment. Strictly speaking, I understand that it is technically the, not the right application. It's a B8 application, warehousing. But I'd like to propose that within the, um, as I mentioned earlier, CS7, uh, delivering socially inclusive communities and within uh, the decision-making process, NPPF 38, that we recommend that this is approved. Sorry, Chairman. Just, just before you vote, um, uh, just think we, we need conditions if, if members are, are minded to approve. So mm -hmm. I, I was just going to suggest that if members are minded to approve, that the conditions that we would need to add on on, on this, uh, and perhaps we could agree these um, uh, and, and def defer issuing the decision to to the chairman and vice chairman, so that we can just agree the opening times. Um, uh, tie the development to the uh, to, to the plans that have been submitted already, and then um, a suitably worded condition to um, uh, uh, re restrict the use. And, and um, <coughs> um, no, I don't. No, I, don't think, I, I think that that would be the, the main three that we would. Is there a way we can also condition? I know what Paul was saying. He's concerned that the the workshop element can be taken away at any point. Um, Can it be conditioned on that I, remaining? I, I think, in, in terms of the use, I think we could <laughs> we can uh, come up with some wording that that it, it requires it to be used for daycare workshop facility only, and no 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 other other use. I, I think we can come up with some wording to, to that effect. So uh, effectively, it's what the applicants have asked for, and um, but that there's no other permitted change because, as Paul said, that once it's a daycare use, there's potential for it to then change to uh, uh, other uses within that. I think we need to restrict it to specifically the use that it, that is applied for here, and, and members might even wish to consider that it, it's a personal permission to the, the business that's applied applied for it um, so that they can use it for their purpose but if um, if they were to cease using it it would then arguably require a pla another planning application for somebody else to, to take over uh, to me that makes common perfect perfect sense so just to just to clarify then that um, council court is putting a proposite proposal based on using cs7 and cs38 for approval um, with conditions to be delegated to um, the planning officer, myself, and my vice chair to um, approve. Um, if that is the case, is there a second? We had date, Councillor Wilby. Um, so, all those in favour? Six now, Chair. Um, against? Two against, Chair. And there's no abstention. No approach. abstentions. Therefore, the motion is passed and the um, application approved on the basis of um, the conditions. Thank you, Committee. That was a, that was, it wasn't an easy decision, I know. Um, we now move <clears throat> on to um, the next application, which is 20240636 FUL, <clears throat> change of use of land from agriculture to residential. Extension of garden as per curve red line of the block plan. New boundary wall and hedge to edge of new garden area. Low retaining wall to east side of the driveway to create a level drive to keep water off the highway. Approximately five bricks high using reclaimed red brick and lime mortar. Um, all of those who had um, said they were going to sit out have sat out. Um, Mr Johnson to present the report. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Wait two seconds, Councillor Payne. You. I'm just following what David's given me. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, this is this Councillor West. Sorry. <laughs> sorry for confusing you, Councillor Payne. <laughs> Go take a rest in the in the wings. Councillor Johnson. 
Councillor Johnson. Councillor Johnson. <laughs> you got me confused no, now, Ray. No, no, not even elected. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, yes, Mr. Well, Johnson. Thank sorry. you. Sorry, Chairman. Um, thank you. So, um, as you said, this is a, a, a change of use um, uh, of land. Sorry, if I get to the right section of my report, so flip things around. Yeah, so, it's a change of use of land um, at, at Eight Main Street Barrow. Um, you can just see on on the plan here. Um, I've just got um, an aerial view of the the property, which is a semi-detached property, the two, two semi-properties have had um, extensions in the past, and you can see the, the recently approved extension. Um, this parking area here, there was a, a, a formerly a, a garage on there that's, that's been removed, and the, the proposal is to effectively put in a, a curtilage extension. So this is the, uh, an aerial shot that you can see the, the former garage that has been demolished and there's been an extension to the side of the property. And what is proposed is effectively an extension that comes out to the rear of where, uh, the rear of where that garage was, slightly, slightly further along, and then coming out and rounding off in, in this area here. Uh, this is what was originally proposed, um, but we had concerns about the, 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 the way that boundary would, would look and how it, how it would feature with a, a, a forming a natural boundary to the site. So um, we've asked um, the applicant to, to square it off. The dotted line is where a, a low retaining wall will be put in order to create leveled access for the car parking area, and then this would form the, the garden area, and the remainder would be left within the existing uh, paddock. So the, the, the relevant policies are, are listed there. So obviously we've got the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, the year, forgive me, the year on that is wrong. It's been updated to 2023. Um, you've got the core strategy, you've got the site allegations policy, and you've got the uh, supplementary planning document, um, which um, talks about um, garden extensions and, and, and rounding off uh, effect. Um, uh, in, in this instance, um, I think the, the, the way we've considered it in terms of rounding off is that you have the existing garage or the garage that's been since been demolished and you're taking a line from behind that and, and going back. It, it, it is exciting slightly beyond that, but not to such an extent that it will have any particular visual um, adverse impact uh, or, or look out of character um, or cause any harm or to the open countryside. Um, so, uh, as I've said, relevant policies, CS4 restricts development in the, uh, that, that's uh, essential in, in the open countryside, um, but the uh, SPD uh, supplementary planning guidance does allow extensions to, to curtilages where they're considered to be appropriate and rounding off. Um, in this particular instance, um, the visual impact, it, it, it's located in an appropriate location. Um, the, the retaining wall is, is kept low in order to minimise impact. Um, the proposal would um, fit in with the area. As I said, we amended the, the boundary treatment so that it was straight and form a more traditional field boundary rather than have the curved um, appearance, which would perhaps look uh, a bit incongruous um, in the area. Uh, no impact on residential amenity and adequate um, parking and turning space. Um, so on that basis, um, it is considered that the proposal does comply with all relevant policies and is recommended for approval, Chairman. Thank you. Um, we have no, no speakers. Um, committee, over to you for questions. Oh, Mr. Councillor Corby, just in time seem to be leading the way of trying to, well, for me I've just um, the questions are not in, irrelevant for me it would probably be uh, uh, the fact that it's not it's Council of Westy we wouldn't be probably discussing this at committee so uh, from my perspective <coughs> it seems to be all present and correct no problem thank you um, any other further questions okay the recommendation in front of you is approval subject to conditions um, please can I have a proposer 
Very quick there, Councillor Ellison. And a seconder, Councillor Karen Payne. All those in favour? That's you, Numbers Chair. That's carried. Thank you, Committee. Um, we now move on to, um, actually, um, we've got various people returning and, and exiting. <clears throat> Lost track now who's coming and going. Great. So we're, we're, we're back to full complement. Thank you. <clears throat> the next application is 2024 RG3, alterations to existing side elevation, removal of garage doors, and replacement of the new front and internal um, alterations. Um, Mr. Burberry, I believe you're presenting this report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first slide shows the, uh, the area of the existing library that forms the application site area. This is a satellite image. This is a view down Bold Lane. This is the view directly facing the, the garage doors, which would be replaced with a brick wall with high level windows. This is the rear of the library, and uh, a rear door would be added between those two wooden structures. Those would be you know, removed in due course. It's another photograph of the same elevation, and it's where that grit bin, grit bin is, is where the door would roughly go. This is the access at the rear that would be used to uh, access that door and would come out on the other side elevation via by that gated doorway there in the distance. There's a clearer plan of the, the area to be that forms the application site area. These are the existing elevation drawings and the proposed. This is the rear elevation with the addition of the door. This is the change in the floor space which will have access obviously to the, the rear and obviously from, in, from in, inside the, the existing library. The existing site plan, and that's the proposed site plan. Main issues are relating to policy, and these are listed in this slide and the, the next slide. With regards to the external appearance, there's no objection from the conservation officer and there's no objection from highways, both subject to conditions. The application proposes external alterations to the existing library, which include the removal of the existing metal sliding garage door and it being replaced with a brick wall with high level windows to match the existing elevations and it's proposed to provide a rear entrance door. The principle of development is acceptable and will not have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the conservation area. There's no objection from highways. Planning permission is recommended subject to conditions. As you'll have seen in the addendum item, that there is a confirmation that uh, since drafting the report, there has been no further consultation responses and it's recommended that planning permission is granted. Uh, thank you, Darren. Um, committee, any questions? Councillor Ray Payne. I think I should have mentioned that this actually comes within my ward, although I don't take responsibility for the library or the adjacent statue. I'm not that clearly understood. But, uh, uh, well, you, know. you can't take bits of ward. <laughs> but um, I just want absolute confirmation that the entrance and the exit uh, entrance for the youth club, which I'm all in favour of, the actual youth club that that is not going anywhere near Ball Lane. Garage door. Below shows that bricked mm. up with high level windows. Right. The access will be from within the library right. to the family hub and also via the rear access. Right. 
the reason I raise that, Chair, is because the area off Ball Lane is a large number of elderly people, and in my experience, which is considerable, elderly people and teenagers are not the greatest mix that you can have. So I think it's, in, but we do need the youth centre, and provided that it's properly run, which I'm sure it will be, and uh, I can't, I think this will be a real great asset to the town. Thank you. I believe Highways made a similar comment, did they not, that it shouldn't yeah. go down Ball Chair, Lane. Chairman, just to confirm, so again, the, the access on Ball Lane is blocked up, and there's an internal access, and there's also a door that's on this side here, and then you come round the side here and access it from the front, uh, uh, where the, uh, the main entrance is to the, to the unit as well. Thank you. Councillor Ellison. That was exactly my question. I couldn't work out how to get in and out. Um, I've seen the other the other complaints that we've had because I'm also Oakham South um, have been about the, the change of use within the library um, and whether or not that's appropriate. A lot of it, I think, is excellent. So I'm and it's been very well thought through um, and it's very flexible. And I don't think that's come out very clearly that there's a flexible usage within that environment. So I'm going to say, really. No, it's, it's only the external uh, alterations to the building that require planning permission in this instance. Thank you. Um, any other further questions from the committee? Um, the recommendation, <coughs> apologies, the recommendation in front of you is for approval. Can I have a proposer from Councillor Payne and a seconder, Councillor, oh, Councillor, your hand was on the way down. Um, so Councillor Brown, um, all those in favour? <coughs> That's you now, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Uh, thank you. Um, we move on to the next agenda item, <coughs> 1206 RG3, alterations to the existing front elevation of Uppingham Library, comprising blocking up of existing access, creation of new entrance, and replacement of existing windows and doors. Um, Darren, to present this report also. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> uh, this is another alteration to one of the libraries. Uh, the Uppingham Library is on Queen Street, uh, the alterations here are a little bit more different. They include the enclosure of the existing front elevation, which I'll show you on the drawings when we get there, and the creation of a new entrance towards the middle of the building. Uh, this is a, another view along Queen Street to the front elevation and the existing windows, which would be changed. <coughs> Another view, some view going, looking down the other way. This is of the, the side elevation and the rear. This is the existing layout and elevations, and this is the proposed and rear elevations. And you'll see that the main entrance will have moved much further down the front, the front elevation with the existing elevation blocked up. Those are the, the layout plans, which obviously, again, like with the Oakham Library, you know, there is some internal alterations proposed, but they don't require planning permission. Main issues relate to policies that are listed in the, this, slide, this slide and the next one. There's no objection from the conservation officer and no objection from highways subject to <coughs> conditions. The principle of the development is acceptable and will not have, have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the Uppingham conservation area and there's no objection from highways. Now, as you will note, uh, there isn't another addendum item for this, I, this application. Uh, the press notice uh, doesn't expire until the 21st of <coughs> November. So the recommendation in the circumstances is that should planning committee be minded to grant planning permission, that approval of the application is deferred to the chairman and vice chair, subject to no new issues being raised as a result of further consultations responses being received before the expiry of the press notice. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Committee, questions? Councillor Andrew Brown. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, you mentioned about the blocking up of the existing entrance. So does that mean that sort of recessed area is, is then going to be usable within the body of the building? Because it, it's set back a little way, isn't it? Yes, it is. It will be flush. So that would be... Oh, right. So that would be a good use of the space, space then? Yes. Yeah. OK. Thanks. Um, Councillor Ellison. Yeah, I think the other thing to, um, to, to comment on is the, the new um, wheelchair-friendly front door, which I think is going to make life so much easier. Thank you. Um, any other further questions, committee? Um, the recommendation in front of you is for approval. Can I have a proposer? Councillor Ellison, very quick. Um, Councillor West, are you seconding? Um, all those in favour? That's you, Namaste, Chair. That's carried. <clears throat> Did I do it again? <laughs> um, apologies to the to the pair of DWs. Um, <clears throat> we then move on to the appeals report. Um, Justin to present. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, the appeals section. Uh, uh, section two on the appeals obviously sets out the, the new appeals that have come in. We've had had a number. Um, there's applications at, at three and five uh, Northgate, um, Oakham. Uh, that was um, an application for one new dwelling. I won't go all the details, but they're there for members to, to go through in some, some detail. Um, there's uh, another um, appeal that's been submitted at flat 357A High Street, um, Uppingham. Uh, that was uh, retrospective. Um, they've uh, re-roofed part of a building. Um, we're concerned about the materials that have been used on that. Um, there's also um, an application at east of Hollywell Road in Pickworth. Um, that is for the erection of a, a self-built dwelling um, via Hollywell Road, um, and the reasons are, are set out in paragraph 2.3, why that's been refused and obviously will be defending that. And then uh, uh, 2.4, uh, Jacobs Barn, Rookery Lane, Stretton, um, concern being raised, um, we, we've refused an application for 13 replacement windows um, and a pair of French doors. Um, the concern there was um, the use of UPVC. Uh, in that particular location. Um, and the application, we've also got a, an appeal in um, at land to the south of Staffordford Road, Wissendine, which was around a biodiversity condition. Um, that appeal may be withdrawn. We've got a current application in to remove the condition. The condition was put on before the 10% biodiversity net gain requirement came in. We only put the condition on because the applicants had offered the 10%, but they, for, for, for some strange reason, they, they, they've, they've taken that away. It wasn't some, it, it isn't something that, that at the time that we, we could um, in, insist on. Um, and I think it is something mm -hmm. that through the current application, we will probably revolt, resolve and, and see the application withdrawn if we can come to an agreement on that point. But um, failing that, the, the applicant will leave the appeal in and we may have to defend our position on that. Um, and then finally, uh, I think land to the west of Station Road um, wing, um, that was a change of use of um, a, a large area to um, put some boutique holiday um, cabins within the trees um, in, in that location. Again, that, that, that was one that, that we refused. And finally, sorry, I uh, missed this one off. Um, there was um, land at Rutland Water campsite um, in Edith Western, change of use of the agricultural field um, for uh, an enclosed dog walking field. And the concern there is um, the impact on the Rutland water um, protection area and, and obviously the um, wildlife in that area. Um, decisions that we've had back in, um, section three, um, 
Uh, six, uh, the street South Luffenham, that was an application uh, where they were seeking to uh, uh, form a new window opening in the northwest elevation. Um, we won the appeal, it was dismissed, and the concern there was the impact on the fabric of the Grade 2 listed building. Uh, the next one, 12 Main Street, or the next two, 12 Main Street, are the listed building and the planning application. This was for the demolition of a single-storey, uh, fairly modern, I think, glazed extension and the replacement with a two-storey extension. And again, um, the inspector agreed um, that it would have an adverse impact on the Grade 2 listed building and also on the... Um, uh, I think setting of um, uh, of its historic interest and also the conservation area, I think, on that one as well. And then finally, um, Main Street, Liddington, uh, the erection of a single dwelling, that was a resubmission. Um, and again, um, the inspector uh, considered that it failed to preserve the setting of nearby listed buildings and the conservation area. So um, uh, four successfully defended <laughs> appeals. And that, that concludes it. Um, so um, I will get that for you because I know in the past we've talked about getting the, the figures. It is something that I've been working on in the background and I believe I've had some information um, sent through to me today to check. Once I've got that up and running, we'll be able to automatically provide and we will add a section into this report that pro provides performance. Just storage, yeah. yeah, I think, and, and this is why we want to report on it. But uh, generally, yes, we have, um, we've had a few that we've um, uh, lost, but the majority, we're in a very good position. Um, I think the target is that we don't, we can't lose more than 10% of the appeals um, against all our applications. Um, last time I checked, we were like one or two percent, something like that. So we we we're doing very well. It, so if if we if we if you um, yeah, effectively, what happens is that if you fail the um, if you get too many of your appeals overturned, um, it's considered that you're making uh, bad decisions. The quality of your decisions are pulled into question. And same with the speed. If you don't determine enough quickly enough, um, then you can be put into special measures, at which point the government will um, send in um, planners to um, you know, effectively come and sort us out. Um, and also applicants can also then apply directly to the Secretary of State to have their applications determined. Um, rather than coming to the planning authority until we've sorted ourselves out. Thankfully, we are no way near that. We are doing really well in terms of speed um, and performance. We're at 100 and the high 90s for all of the relevant targets. And like I say, appeal decisions, we're, we're well below the threshold. No other urgent business, so we close the meeting at eight minutes past eight. Thank you, everybody.